Good morning followers, you're welcome to Zotes Piano Improvisations and in this video I'm going to teach you staff notation I'm going to start from the scratch, I'm going to teach you how to learn the staff notation and how to understand it better I have most of my friends from afar telling me how can we learn how to play the staff notation I know it's a very difficult task but I assure you following my videos you are going to get the breakdown of everything about staff notation let's dive into it staff notation okay when we hear about the staff notation the first thing that will come into our mind is five lines and spaces using symbols to represent music this this kind of music is not where you come and see soft annotations is is not where you come and think of what to play but music are represented with the use of symbols and the first the, the main character of this staff notation is the five lines and four spaces this is the only thing that we should know how to um, how, how to manipulate and we can get the staff notation all right okay let me move you through by um, telling you how many alphabets we have in the keyboard and how you can locate those alphabets in the keyboard okay so we have a b c d e f and g these are the seven keys we have in the keyboard we have a b c d e f and g so where are this a b c d e f and g located in the keyboard okay i can help you draw a keyboard in this let me draw this I've just drawn a two octave keyboard. I will not love this video to be too long. I don't love it to be too long. So these are the black notes. These are the black notes. As you can see, these are the black notes, and guess what? It really looks like a real keyboard. So, coming over here, we have key C, we have the key of C, we have the key of D, we have the key of E, we have the key of F, we have the key of G, then we have the key of A, we have the key of B, we have the key of C. We have the key of D again, we have the key of E, we have F, we have G, we have A, and we have C again. This is a two octave keyboard. So how do we know how do we know the keys that are which? Let me make this thing nice for you to see. This is key G. So how do we make this thing? How do we understand everything about this keyboard? So coming to it, we have key C to be the key before the two black notes. As you can see, these are the two black notes. So we have key C to be the keys before the two black notes. Then we have key D to be the key in the middle of the two black notes. Then we have key E that is, that is the key that is ending the uh, two black notes. Then coming again, we have key of F. The key of F is before the three black notes. Then we have key G, which is after the first note of the three black notes. Then we have key A, which is before the last um, three black notes. Then we have key B closing it. It's applicable over here because we have C, we have D, we have E. You can just manipulate them. You see C. Okay. Then how do we know the names of this keyboard? The uh, of these keys in the we have seven alphabetical keys in the keyboard and then we have the notes which we call the accidentals 
these notes that are called the accidentals are the notes that made up the piano without these notes you have you won't have a perfect keyboard or piano to play okay so let's dig in now we have c we have c sharp we have d we have d sharp this first uh, black note that is that these first two black notes are it, they are they, it has two different names you can call it c sharp or you can call it d flat c sharp or d flat a anything about the sharp is something that is moving forward anything about the flat is something that is moving back forward i guess you understand this now so if you want to call this second uh, black note we can call it the D flat. Uh, sorry, we can call it the D sharp or the E flat. If we want to call this first um, tray black, the first note of the tray black notes, we can call it F sharp or G flat. So this is applicable to all of them. You can call G sharp or A flat. You can call A, A sharp or B flat. So that is how all of them can do like this or this way this way or this way this way or this way so anyhow you put it just know the right word to use okay so having known how uh, the, the the alphabets in the keyboard and having known where they are placed and having known how the the, 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 the namings work so let's do something else that is uh, more advanced here so Then we're still on the great staff. Okay. So I told you earlier that staff notation consists of having the five lines and the four spaces. These are the two things that made up a staff. When you have a five lines and when you have a four space. So let's draw and see. We're having one. This is the first line. This is the second line. This is the third line. This is the fourth line. And this is the fifth line. Okay. This is good. Then coming here, we have the first. We have the second. We have the third. And we have the fourth. Then the fifth. Okay, so in this now, with, with this, this, this is just an ordinary five lines and ordinary five space. So we don't know what they represent. In, in staff notation, in, in the close call, we have what we call the treble clef, which is drawn this way. Sorry. The treble clef, which is drawn this way. Then we have the bass clef, which is this way. We we'll also have the tenor and the alto clef, but that one is for open score. It's, it's not for the normal keyboard we play. If you are if you are a someone if you are someone that is playing a one man uh, classical, you you just make use of this close score. But the open score is where you have the violin, the violin score, the alto, uh, the 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 alto violin score, the viola score, the all these orchestras. Where you have the open score, that, those ones are where we have the open score, and that's where you see the auto clef, you see the treble, uh, the tenor clef, you see the treble clef, you see the bass clef. So, on the, until I insert a clef, this these are clefs, clefs. So until I insert a clef on this staff, I am yet to know this kind of staff or staff. This is it. At least uh, this five lines and four spaces are. Okay, let's go and then start the. We we'll draw this. As you can see now, this is a treble clef on the first five four lines and four spaces. This is now telling me that whatever that is here is now treble and alto based. Whatever that is here is now treble and alto based. So you you can still get whatever you, you can manipulate anything, but this is this alone is treble 
Clef. And Trevor Clef has its own way of, uh, of being represented by the alph alphabets. So let's put the bass clef here. This is the bass clef. So you can see now there is a difference. This one is having another thing, and this one is having another thing. So this A, B, C, D, that is A, B, C, D, E, F, G. These are the seven keys we have, seven alphabetical keys we have in the keyboard. So I am going to represent these seven keys, these are the seven alphabetical keys. I'm going to substitute them into this, uh, into this staff notation, into this great staff, <laughs> into this equation, <laughs> like those that are doing the mathematics. So um, let me let me put this this way. We we'll call this a great staff. If for those that have all these um, four E serial set keyboard, you see this on the screen. You see something like this on the screen of your keyboard. Okay. So let's substitute now. On the first line of the treble clef, you get E. On the second line of the treble clef, you get G. On the third line, you get B. On the fourth line, you get D. On the fifth line, you get F. I believe you understood what I did. Then let's do for the space. We'll have F on the first space. We'll have A on the second space. We'll have C on the third space. We'll have E on the fourth space. Very good. Then coming to the bass clef. I told you, you know, I told you that something must change. Because here is the treble, here is the bass. So there's no how they will be the same. So here is starting with G, here B, here D. Here F and here A. You see how it's going now? Then we have A, C, E, and G. There's something they, they teach us then in school. If you want to represent, if you want to represent, uh, remember this. This is just an acronym that they told us. Then E, G, B, D, F. And they come and tell us every good boy deserves favor. Then father and Charles. And the father and children eat. Then good boy deserve favor always. All cows eat grass. So this is just the um, the acronym and its meaning that they give to us then to remember it when we are learning. So I'm just throwing that to you again for you to learn. I don't think it's a bad thing. Okay, having seen all these things now, this is the staff notation. This is exactly the staff notation there is nothing else to worry about you are you are here and you are, you are, you are going to learn it all right so this alphabetical um this alphabetical um keys are going to be represented in notes but before that let me sh show you something else let me complete this thing it is incomplete so let's let's read this thing now the law is line space line space line space. you can still read this way line space line space just be counting them gradually gradually line space line space line space line so everything you can't line space line space line space so anyhow you want to count it then let's count g a b c d e f g a something is missing and that thing that 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 alphabetical note that is missing should be on the space because as you can see G is on the line, A is on the space. Coming here, you see F on the line and G on the space. And the next thing is A, which is on the line. So the next note you should see will be something that is going to be in the space. So I am having B to be in the space. Do you get me? Then B. Then something else is coming but yes i know c is coming but we don't how, how do we represent c in this state because c should be on a line and we don't know how to represent them then staff notation is so easier and organized that it has something we call the ledger line it's a small dash this way with this ledger line ledger ledger line so this letter line is used to represent nodes that are above the stave or beneath the stave. Letter line. So where is this letter line going to be? 
then we put a letter like it's just a short line then you put c have you seen that the thing is now mature you are having c on the line so this letter line is just telling you that c is on the line so after c comes d so d should be on the space d is in our space now then we'll have e which is in the line f g a b c d e f so and so forth then let's let's complete let's just move forward here let's go. then we'll have f on the line here at the end of the space then the next node should be g which is on the space then the next node should be a which is on the line you see how the term went now then coming down from here now you just be descending descending in a, in alphabetical order any if you read g you go to back to a then this is g so the next thing should be f and the next thing should be um uh, what is what comes before f which is e so the the first line been the first ledger line beneath the bars uh, uh or the beneath the start is e then the first ledger line after the uh, above the travel clear or above the stave is a so having known all this then this will move us to the staff notation proper okay we are still in the same thing then we have what we call the musical notes musical notes these musical notes are the notes that we are going to substitute in those alphabets or are notes that are going to be represented you know in a, in, in a music in a music you get uh, you get uh, songs that are uh, that have particular beats given to a particular song and then if you, if you don't know how the, the normal beats to count you fail the song you cannot get the song but so the work of this note is to guide you is to tell you the kind of beat that should be in that particular sentence or in the particular word that you write uh, that you wrote on your music so coming here we have um we have our brief our what we call brief this brief is eight beats then we have what we call the semi brief semi brief which is called which is four bits then we have what we call the minimum the minimum is just like a d a minimum. then this minimum has two bits then we have what we call a crotchet which has a shaded a shaded um, head and this is crotchet which has one bit. Then we have what we call the quiver. It's a shaded head uh, note with one tail. This is the tail called the quiver, which is half bit. Then we have what we call the semi quiver. It's a shaded tail. It's a shaded head with two tails. We we'll call it the semi quiver. Is one fourth bits. Then we have what we call the we have what we call the demi semi quiver. Semi quiver. This is one eight bits. Then we also have what we call the also have what we call the hemis demi semi quiver. Then these notes are just this one. It has it's heavy, demi, semi quiver. Same quiver you see now there. Beats. Okay. So um, not all these um, not all these musical notes are in use. Where you see all these kind of things are in many from okay from the semi quiver come coming down you see them mainly in classical piano pieces excuse me from uh beethoven from uh bar 
from uh, chopping or oh, that's where you're going to see all this stuff then this brief you don't normally see it also then um then what else again these are the musical notes so coming back to brief you say the brief has eight bits so anywhere you are playing in your staff notation and you find the brief so it means that if you play that brief you are going to wait for eight bits counts then depending on the measure of you are giving to then when you have semi brief you're going to wait for four bits when you have minimum you have to wait for two bits when you have crochets one bit when you have quiver one and a half and so on do you understand so this helps in making the music easier because staff notation is only represented by um is represented by um by music symbols represented by symbols alone so um we are going to end this class at this point and i believe we all learned something serious in this class by the next time we're going to teach you how to substitute this uh, notes and use them for your music and before we go into the practical aspect of playing the staff notation thank you and god bless you please remember to subscribe to Ozata piano Preventions and um click on the bell notification uh, button to get notified whenever i post video that and like this as you can see this is a nice video so you will like it if you learn if you if you if you really want to learn how to play the staff notation thank you and god bless you